Good morning, guys. Today's class, we're going to read about the second program in microcontroller and emulator system. So, in that, first we're going to how to start a program. First, we're going to go to a project, new vision project. So, type it name it as we're going to type the name it as program dot asm. So save. I'll be saving the file and I'll go to NXP and I need to choose LPC2148. 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 Okay. So now, if it is of a C program, we need to click it on S. If it is of assembly level language, we need to click it no. So now, go to file, new. So I have already typed the program, just I'm going to copy paste the program and I will be saving the program. Save program, the name program sm save, yes, okay, I have saved my program, then I need to compile this program. So before compiling, I need to go to a target. I need to set the target. Go to target option. Go to output. So in that output, click on create X file. So next, go to a linker. Click it on make RW section position independent and click OK. So next, in the source group, you need to add the file to your source group. So source group, go to file type all files. So type it on and 2.asm add so now you can see if, if you click on this place we're going to get this program so now after building that i need to translate my program so here is the button to translate so i'm going to translate this button uh, this program so hence we have got zero errors and zero warnings now i need to build my program i have built build the target and i have got zero errors and zero warnings so now what I need to do, I need to debug my program before going to debug my program. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain the code. So in the first line of the code, so here is the first line of the code. So the first line of the code, as I've said, there will be two types of memory. One is program memory and data memory. So this area will going to decide in which memory your program has to be stored. Okay. So every program has a start and the next line is move. So move or not comma hash of 10 so hash of 10 is an immediate value which will be moved into my or not hence my or not will going to become now 10 so so move or not comma hash of 10 so my add 10 value will be moved into or not so my or not contains 10 now so next move or not to r1 so whatever the value which is present in r0 now the value of r0 is 10 i will be moving this r0 value to my r1 so my now my r1 value will going to become 10 so next we'll going to go with sub s so what the sub s sub s sub is a subtraction where s stands for the update status registers now what it is going to do is it will going to subtract the value 1 from r1 so my r1 value is now 10 so my r1 value is 10 here so 10 minus 1 will going to become 9 so 9 will be stored in my r1 so understood so here the r0 value was 10 so from this instruction we have moved the value of r0 10 to my r1 so now the r1 contains the value 10 so 10 and the value 1 will going to minus the value with r1 so 10 minus 1 will going to become 9 so 9 will be stored in my r1 so in the next line, it will going to compare the R1 with 0. So my R1 value is 9. So 9 will be compared with 0. Whether it's if it is equal, then it will going to stop the execution. Otherwise, it will going to move on to the next instruction. So 9 is not equals to 0. Hence, it will going to move to this add instruction. So move add R0 comma R1. So my R0 value is 10. Now my R1 value will become going to 9. So 10 plus 9 will going to become 19 so 19 will be stored in my r3 so my r3 becomes 19 now so now move 
R3 to R0. So now I am going to move my R3 value that is 19 value to my R0. So now my R0 value is 19. So if we convert the 19 into an hexadecimal form, it will be 13. 1, 3. If you convert the 19 into an hexadecimal, it will be 13. Hexadecimal in the form 19 divided by 16. 16 ones are 16 and the remaining 3 will going to become 13. So now my R0 becomes 13. 1, 3 in hexadecimal. So if we keep it in number, it is of 19. So now what you're going to do now, my R0 value becomes 19. Now what it becomes 19. So this is how, see, for example, if I debug my program, I'm going to debug. Okay. So now, the first, what it will going to do? It will going to do, move the value 10 to my R0. So now R0 becomes 10. So move R0 10 to R1. So my R0 value is of A. So here it is of A. A is nothing but 10 in hexadecimal. So the R0 value is 10 now. So next, it will, we are going to move this R0 value to my R1. So now R0 is of 10 and R1 is of 10. So both R1 and R2 is of 10. So next, what it will going to do, it will going to subtract the value and we will going to get the value. So what it will going to do, my R0 was 10. So here 10 minus 1 will going to give 9. So that is what my R0, R1 value has been updated to 9 here. So now what it will going to do, it will going to compare this 9 with 0. So what it does, it compares the value 9 with 0. If it is equal, it will going to stop. Otherwise, it will going to move to this instruction. So here 9 is not equal to 0. Hence, it comes to my add instruction. So this add instruction, so here this add instruction will going to perform the addition. So 10 plus 9 will going to become 19. If you convert that 19 into an hexadecimal form, it will going to yield 13. So now R3, so this value will be stored in this R3. So my R3 becomes 13. So next, what it will going to do, it will going to move the R3 value to R0. See here, my R0 value is of A. Now it will going to move to R0. So now my R0 value has been updated to 13. So next what it does, it will going to move to this value. Now I'm going to move R0 value to my R1. So 13. So R0, uh, uh, I'm going to move the value R0. So what it does, the next step, it will going to update my R1 value. So previously my R1 value was 9 here. So 9 minus 1 will going to become 8. Next, it will going to compare this 8 with 0. If is 8 is equal to 0, then it will going to stop. 8 is not equal to 0, hence it will going to add the next instruction. So it is not equals. So next, what it does, R0 value was 19, 19 plus 8. So R1 here, eight, uh, 9 minus 1 becomes 8. So 19 plus 8 is of 27. So 27 will be stored in R3. If you convert this 27 into an hexadecimal form, it will be of 1B. So 1, 16 ones are 16 and the remainder will be of 12. So 12 can, 11 can be represented. So remainder is of 11. 11 can be represented using B. So the result is 1B. So 1B is stored in this R3. Now what it will going to do, it will going to move R3 value to my R0. So now R0 is, the, R0 is 13. If I move R0, so now R0 is going to become to 1B. My R0 becomes 1B. So next, what it does, it does, now, whatever the R1 value was, the R1 value was 8. 8 minus 1 will, will going to become 7. So like this, the loop will going to get repeated. So my every loop, my R0 gets changes. My R1 will going to get decremented. Decremented, decremented, decremented. So decremented. Now, now what it does, my R1 value is 1 now. So 1 minus 1 will going to become 0. Now, wait. Uh, 1 minus 1 will become to 0. It compares 0 with 0. If 0 is equal to 0, it will going to stop the execution and it will going to come out of the loop. So this is how 
the second program works. So my sum of first 10 numbers is 37. 37 means if you add 1 to 10, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, you're going to get 55. So 55, if you keep it in hexadecimal form, it will be of 37. This is your second program. Hope you guys have understood. Thank you guys. We're going to meet in next class. Thank you.